Hello, welcome to a new unit on complex numbers. In this unit, what we are going to see is the inverse of a complex number and the division of complex numbers. Well, the requirements you need are simply to know what a complex number is, to know how to multiply complex numbers, even though in this unit we will go over this multiplication and to know how to solve simple linear systems. Well, let's start by quickly reviewing what a complex number is. A complex number in binomial form is of the form of a plus bi, where a and b are real numbers, and the imaginary number i is simply the root of minus 1. Note that this implies that i squared equals minus 1. We would also like to review the addition of complex numbers. The addition of complex numbers is calculated like this. If I have to add two complex numbers, we add the real parts on one side and the imaginary parts on the other side, and the solution is another complex number, as you see there on the transparency, the product of complex numbers will be a little bit more complicated. If you remember, it could be done applying this formula that you see on the screen or by multiplying, as you already know, applying the distributive property of the product with respect to the sum and then joining the imaginary part with imaginary part, the real part with the real part, and taking into account that it will appear an i squared, which is equal to minus 1. I insist the two ways are equally valid. Then remember that there was a neutral element and an inverse element in the properties of multiplication. What does this mean? For every complex number that is different from 0 plus 0 i, there is an element that we call inverse that when multiplying z times z to the power of minus 1 times this inverse number, it gives the neutral element 1 plus 0 i. Today's objective is to try to calculate this inverse number. Let's see how this procedure is done. Let's start doing it with an example. I think it is easier to see it with numbers and then see the formula in general. We are going to take the complex number 4 plus 3 i and we are going to try to calculate the inverse of that complex number 4 plus 3i. Notice that we have denoted the inverse number as x plus y times i, where x and y are the unknowns we are trying to clear in this section. Once we know how much is the value of x and the value of y, we will substitute it there in that complex number from z to the power of minus 1, and we will have the inverse. What property does the inverse satisfy? Simply that by multiplying 4 plus 3 times i, times this new number, the inverse x plus y times i, it must result in 1 plus 0 i, that is the equation you see on the screen must be verified. To be able to isolate x and y, what we have to do is to multiply those two complex numbers and then equalize. Let's start by multiplying those complex numbers. I'm going to apply the formula for the product of complex numbers. If you notice what I do is I multiply the real part of the first complex number by the real part of the second complex number and then multiply the imaginary parts. 3 times i. You can't simplify in this case. We have to leave it as 4x and 3y because we can't do that product. Well, next we do the cross products. That is, we multiply the real part of the first complex number with the imaginary part of the second one and we put it in the right place. Then we multiply the imaginary part of the first complex number by the real part of the second one and we put it in the right place. Okay, so we have this new equation. How do we clear the x and y? Keep in mind that two complex numbers are equal if the real part of one is equal to the real part of the other, and the imaginary part of the complex number of one part is equal to the imaginary number of the other part. Well, that translates into the following equations. If you look at 4x plus 3y should equal 1, and 4y plus 3x should equal 0, what do I get there? That is simply a system of two equations with two unknowns that you are supposed to know how to solve. So by applying any of the known techniques for solving that system of equations, either by substitution, equalization, reduction, Gauss, Kramer, we can arrive at the following solutions. x is going to be equal to 4 divided by 4 squared plus 3 squared, and y is going to be equal to minus 3 divided by 4 squared plus 3 squared. Why haven't I simplified the result? Because I want you to see what the general form is of the inverse of a complex number. Then we'll do it with letters and you'll see what the formula is. Once we know who is x and who is y, we substitute in z for the minus 1 as I told you at the beginning. Then the inverse of z would be 4 divided by 4 squared plus 3 squared minus 3 divided by 4 squared plus 3 squared. Now yes, simplifying 4 squared is 16, 3 squared is 9, the sum is 25, the number, the inverse of z, results in 4 25th minus 3 25th times i. If we wanted to verify that this result is true and to practice a little bit the multiplication of complex numbers, what we would have to prove is that z times z to the power of minus 1, this new number that we just found, it results in 1 plus 0 times i. 
Well, let's try it, and we're going to do it another way now. We're going to multiply using the distributive property of the product with respect to the sum. Let's go ahead. If we multiply the real part of the first one by the real part of the second one, that is 4 times 4 25ths, I get that number right there. Then we will simplify and we will see that that is 16 25ths. Because as you know, when multiplying an integer by a fraction, what we do is multiply the integer times the numerator of that fraction. We will see that next. Well, we continue with the product and we have multiplied the first element of the first complex number with the first element of the second one. Next, we do the same thing. We multiply 4 times minus 3 25th times i and we put it next. We continue now with the imaginary number of the first complex number, 3i. We'll multiply it times 4 25 and put it in there and multiply 3i times minus 3 25 i. Notice that this last term is the one that then multiplying i times i will give me i squared as you can see below. Well, notice now that I have simplified the fractions, as I said before, 4 25 is 16 25 and I do the same with the rest of the fractions. And here you can see the i squared. Taking into account that i squared is minus 1, we would simply change the sign of the last fraction, as you can see. Next, what we do is to join the real parts with the real parts, the imaginary parts with the imaginary parts. And the only thing we have to realize is, notice that 16 25 plus 9 25 results in 25 25, which is 1. And minus 12 25 times i plus is 12 25 times i is a complex number plus its opposite. So that gives 0i. Conclusion, the solution is 1 plus 0i. That is what we wanted to prove. Next, let's imagine that now we don't have an example, we don't have numbers, we simply have a complex number a plus b, i, and we want to calculate its inverse. What is the formula to obtain the inverse directly? Well, observe that we would do the same procedure as before. We would look for a complex number x plus y times i, so that multiplying it by a plus b, i, would give me 1 plus 0i. We repeat the previous steps exactly. We do the multiplication and we equal 1 plus 0i, Equalizing real parts and imaginary parts, we would arrive at this system of two equations with two unknowns, which as before could be solved without any problem. The solutions, if you notice, are quite similar to what we did before in the example, but now simply with letters a and b, and in the denominator a squared plus b squared. So the inverse of z would have the following formula, a divided by a squared plus b squared minus b divided by a squared plus b squared times i. Well, this gives us a quick way to get the inverse of another complex number. As a quick example, we can see if we were given the complex number 2 plus 3 i, its inverse would be this. Just notice that what we do is to take the real part and put it in the first fraction, the imaginary part in the second fraction, and divide by the square of the real part plus the imaginary part. Well, the solution is very easy. In this case, it would be 2 thirteenths minus 3 thirteenths. We already have the inverse. Another quick example, if we had, for example, now minus 2 minus 1 i, we would use the formula again. We would take the real part. It would go to the first fraction, the imaginary part to the second fraction, and below the real part and the imaginary part squared. Notice always that between the two fractions, there is a minus, in this case, minus minus 1. As it says in the numerator, it would give us the positive fraction. It would be minus 2 fifths plus 1 fifth of i. Well, why do we want to define the inverse of a complex number? To be able to define division. Notice that we are going to define division as follows. z, 1 divided by z2, would be z, 1 times the inverse of z2. In other words, the process to divide complexes would be to calculate the inverse of the denominator and multiply it by the numerator. Well, let's see an example. Imagine that z, 1, is 3 plus 5i, and that z, 2, is 4 plus 3i. To calculate the division of z, 1, and z, 2, what we need is to calculate the inverse of z, 2. I remind you that the formula was that, and simply taking z2 and substituting the value of a and b in their corresponding places, I get that the inverse of z2 is 4 25ths minus 3 25ths. Well, now what we will do is multiply z, 1 by the inverse of z2, as we have done before, and this product is supposed to be exactly the same as the ones we have done before, and therefore I leave it as an exercise. The result should give us 27 25ths plus 11 25ths times i, well, what have we seen in this unit? We've seen the inverse of complex numbers, how to calculate them, and how to divide them. Remember that to divide complex numbers, what we do is multiply the numerator by the inverse of the denominator. That concludes today's lesson. Thank you.